plenty. Um, uh, but be, uh, before we get underway, I'm just going to introduce uh, a couple of the team in the background. We have Trudy Kemp, my community coaching advisor, working behind the scenes uh, tonight. Um, we have uh, Linda Muller, uh, who's going to be looking after the chat function this evening. Uh, so we'll we'll stop uh, periodically for questions along the way. Uh, we have Scott Stewart from Bay of Plenty Cricket, uh, who's going to give us a little bit of a cricket update for the local cricket community. And we have Deneen in, hovering in the background, uh, looking after some of the technical stuff. So I'll just uh, quickly hand over to Trudy to just give you a, a little quick uh, rundown on on uh, a couple of the, the things to do with Microsoft Teams. Trudy. Kia ora koutou. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, <clears throat> so you should all be able to see that. Just to run through a little bit about Microsoft Teams, uh, you should have this taskbar in the middle of your screen. It goes away when you take your cursor away from it. Uh, here we have the camera and the mute button, so you should have all found those by now. The three dot, uh, oh, you don't need to know that actually. Um, here's the chat function, this little speech box here. So if you press that, you can type any questions um, on that chat function, and Belinda will be looking after those questions at various points where she will um, ask those. And here you've got the participants list. Uh, this is where you can actually pin people. I'm not quite sure whether what you can see, whether you can just see Dave and Kane like I can. Um, the way you pin it is by, this is the participants list here. And if we just go to Dave, you find Dave, you go to these three dots and you can see there's a, there's a pin. Yours would say pin, mine says unpin. That just allows Dave and Kane to stay on the screen. Okay, enjoy the show. That's it from me. Cool, thanks, Trudy. That's great. Um, so tonight, this webinar is is brought to you by Sport Bay of Plenty, uh, and it's supported by uh, the Bay Trust, uh, Lion Foundation, and Sport New Zealand um, via the Bay Trust Coach Force Program. Um, obviously, it's great to see so many of you here with us tonight, in the, which is the the fourth one of our webinar series. Um, we'll be running it as a kind of a QA and a format tonight with Kane being posed a series of questions around, around the team uh, concept uh, and at differing times Belinda will select some questions from that chat function for Kane to respond through. We'll, we'll get through as many as time allows for um, and, uh, but uh, obviously we may not be able to answer all of those questions. Um, we'll record this forum and we'll send you a link post but please note that any Recording, republishing, or further distribution of this webinar is prohibited. So just please bear that in mind. Um, and uh, the uh, the guest we have tonight obviously needs uh, really needs no introduction. Uh, Kane Williamson, 29 years old, a right-handed batsman, captain of the Black Caps since 2016. Uh, played 80 tests with an average of 51. 151 ODIs with an average of 47.5. These may be old figures, Kane, so if it's better than that, uh, please don't hold that against me. Um, and uh, uh, obviously uh, has been in the top, one of the top 10 batsmen in the world for a significant part of his career. Um, number one in the ICC cricket rankings at the end of 2015 with, with a mind-blowing average of 90.15 for test cricket, which... Um, I actually had to go and check that stat three or four times just to make sure that was correct because I didn't believe it the first time. So, uh, uh, and currently ranked four as in the ICC batting rankings. Um, obviously, he's played for multiple teams at home and abroad, uh, playing for, of course, our own northern districts in first class cricket here in New Zealand, and is a uh, obviously a local Taranga Boys College old boy. Um, welcome, Kane. It's a, a great pleasure to have you here on the forum tonight, and thanks for putting out your time uh, to uh, interact with the community here. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks for the uh, the introduction. I'm not much of a, a stats man, but, um, yeah, I don't know exactly what those stats are, whether they're any or relevant at this point in time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a remarkable time in probably all of our lives where we're having to sit down and have a chat, which we've done on a number of um, times before to audiences, but obviously... Um, 
you know, uh, this format um, using the, the technology that we have to use. And, and I hope everybody's um, safe and well. And you know, I've got through this lockdown, um, you know, in a, in a healthy way. Uh, and and also it's it's great to be here. Um, Bay Plenty Sports been a, a huge part of my life, particularly coming through through the grades, not just within um, cricket, but uh, a number of different sports. So, um, yeah, it's nice to be here, and I'm looking forward to answering a few questions. Cool. Thanks, Kane. Uh, kind of, you, you kind of just put us in the right kind of groove, really. Um, I mean, let's let's maybe start by going back a couple of years to to your slightly younger days. What was cricket the only team you played in growing up, or, or kind of were there other sports that kind of helped shape your your skill development as a young person? Um, uh, it's it's always difficult to to know what um, helps and assists skill development, but growing up i was always interested in a number of sports um i always very much looked forward to to the winter season when it was um initially sort of soccer and, and basketball and then became rugby and basketball and then um very much then look forward to, to summer where it was cricket and, and volleyball and then in between times it was trying to participate in um some sports at school like maybe athletics or, or running just to just because you know i found it enjoyable and um, you know, at the time, you don't consider perhaps um, sort of assistance and, and skills, particularly at a young age. It's just the enjoyment that you get from from playing sport. And I've always enjoyed playing team sports and obviously so many elements that, that come with being uh, involved in a group. Uh, and then, you know, I guess you get a little bit older and um, you can kind of reflect back to some fond yeah. memories that you had in, in playing so many sports and particularly in this day and age where you see a lot of oh, what I would say young kids um, that are specializing at a, at a young age. And, yeah. you know, I, I think if I reflect back my, my real appreciation for, for playing so many sports probably um, was most evident in my first year out of school where I was playing professional cricket um, and it was what I wanted to do um, going through yeah. the through the um, years of school it was as many sports as I could and, and cricket sort of um, in all sports with a passion but cricket kind of um, came through a little bit and it was the thing that I I, I really wanted to, to give a crack and and it was funny and, and almost one of those situations where you want to be careful what you wish for because um, <laughs> that all came um, reasonably quickly and a lot of effort that obviously goes into trying to, to meet the standard to a certain extent, but finishing school and, and only experiencing a, a cricket environment and it was going to, to Northern Districts and this was the, the thing that I wanted to do and fortunate to get the opportunity and, um, and then some A stuff. So all of a sudden the first year I had away from school was, was all cricket. Um, yeah. And I didn't realise that the benefits uh, until that first year of having either a other sports, um, the focus of schooling, you know, all these other things that that help keep um, your main focus fresh. And so, um, yeah. yeah, it was that was the first time I think that I I really sort of felt that all these other sports, whether it was skill development or an opportunity just to keep changing so things became fresh yeah. and enjoyable, um, you know, added benefit in a way. Yeah, that, that's cool. I mean, that kind of um, aligns with the, the kind of message Sport New Zealand, the balance is better message that uh, 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 they're putting out there at the moment. Again, there's some good um, uh, research that they've done around kind of Olympians, Commonwealth Games medalists that kind of showed that they all, literally, I think every one to a, to a T is a, played multiple sports in their earlier years. So uh, it kind of helps uh, help uh, shape those later, uh, later efforts. I don't know the stats, but I, I know one thing is for certain that if you, you stop enjoying what you do, then you stop doing it, you know, and, and there's yeah. not many stats perhaps for, for those people, but if you do um, create that one focus in your life at such a young age, um, yeah, there are probably some motor skills that, that could do with um, strengthening if you did have that variety, but often, yeah. and I, I think, you know, everybody's been to school and um, and would have known so many talented individuals that, that perhaps didn't kick on. And a lot of the times it's because they stopped enjoying it. And I do think 
um, there's something in that by just specialising in that that one area, yeah. sort of too young. Cool, that's fantastic. It kind of leads again nicely onto kind of the next question, which was kind of as a teenager, you know, transitioning those through different teams at various levels and and managing all of your the other sports that you're doing, all, all of that kind of stuff. What do you think are some of the key kind of character strengths that helped you transition through all of those teams at that time and and get you through to to the high performance arena um as you mean with cricket and through the grades or you just yeah, yeah so what do you think are some of those key character strengths that helped you kind of forge that path and get through uh, each level as it were each team that you you had to kind of perform in and and, and keep going um uh... And I guess if I think about some of the characteristics of what I currently have, there's a, a real desire to improve um, cool. and whatever it is that I'm doing. And and I really enjoy, I suppose, seeing growth. So um, that's why I think if I look back to schooling and, and I really enjoyed a number of sports is because you could uh, apply that um, yeah. to anything that you were doing and even in um within school um i i knew a lot of my time was spent um focusing on sports but i i really enjoyed um also trying to uh, improve and um in in school as well and uh, you know i also was very fortunate uh, um you know, to have very supportive uh, family and, and parents that that in, encouraged me without um certainly without putting any pressure on me and then yeah. all, the drive, I suppose, that I had um, came from from me, and and cool. so with, with that in mind, the things that I was doing and uh, the opportunities that I that I had in front of me, and to potentially um, make the odd team or, or have the odd good day was was often driven through enjoyment and and the want to to train and the the want to work hard, and you know, there's all these terms that people use and. You know, you got to train hard. You got to work hard, and sometimes it sounds hard. Um, but when uh, when you enjoy it, um, and when the drive comes from from you or the kid, or you know, for whatever whatever age, um, then it's it's kind of not as hard, and it's something that that you want to be doing. And but I I recall back. Um, well, I don't so much. My parents do, but where I was sort of two and and just badgering dad for for throws in the lounge as he was sort of watching the news and. You know, and that was sort of just encouraged to, you know, even, well, I don't do that now, but but now no. that desire to want to improve um, and what it is that I do is, is very much there. Yeah, cool. Um, sorry, I'll just get to Ken. If, if you could just pop your video off, if you could just turn your video off, that, that would be great. Thank you. There's a little bar in the middle with a video symbol. If you can just pop that off, that would be great. Thanks, Ken. Sorry, Ken. So, yeah, I mean, that, that time would have been uh, an interesting time. And obviously you talked about being kind of self-motivated there. Would you say that uh, you, you, you had a, a bit of resilience growing up? And where did that come from? Yeah, I, I suppose so. Um, you know, you, you want to work hard. And I think being fortunate uh, to be involved in a lot of team sports, um, there's always that part of you that wants to fulfill the role that you have to the best of your ability and um, and you want to you don't want I guess you, you don't want to be letting down your peers which in, in some ways um, I think encourages resilience and and often within a group you always got sort of standards and, and behaviors that the team want to to live by um, yeah. and I think it's very important to to show those in action and and try and maintain those um, whether it's on the field or off the field and and you know I know um, when you do see someone that perhaps shows some sort of resilience and what it is that they do it's 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 also a great message for for the people around you so um, yeah. yeah it's funny because you reflect back and you're obviously not entirely conscious of, of some of these things because it's it's not your thought process. It's not, um, you know, if this happens one day, what will, yeah. what will right now look like? All there is is, is what's in front of you. Um, and, 
you know that might be playing for for your primary school or your you know so so keep coming back to the the enjoyment of, of what you do and creating those environments where where kids are able to 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 grow because um, I do think that is a part of enjoyment um, yeah and there's there's that subject of of high performance but I think it's really closely connected um, to to just the ability to create environments where kids can grow at times without getting sometimes too involved because seeing people express themselves and their natural ability, um, I think is really important. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great message. I think um, kind of talking about fun and all of those kind of things, my, uh, my understanding is the All Blacks performance model is uh, performance learning and then the third component is laughter. So I think the intention obviously is to, is to obviously have as much fun as they can with the work that they do so keep it there. yeah let's not take it all t too seriously you know yeah um, it's probably not a, a public message often but you know a, a personal one because at the end of the day it is a sport um even if you're playing it perhaps at the highest level and and it is there to to be enjoyed and you know, i know from from my perspective and a number of the guys in the team you could be playing um you know on, on all different days and in all different situations and um and in some pretty cool tournaments um and there and 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 the professional elements that come with the game can, yeah. can throw certain um, pressures on on you from from time to time but reminding yourself why you you got into the the sport um in the first place are always really good things to to do so you you're treating it or you're looking at it like that kid that you know grew up playing the sport and and you're keeping those reasons pure even in some uh sort of pressured environments that you might face yeah cool which kind of again just leads us nicely on to kind of um obviously as captain of the black caps you 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 you'll have a leadership style um is there any kind of key moments from your from your uh, time growing up in the bay of plenty and and stuff that helped kind of shape your current leadership style and and do you have any advice for any aspiring young leaders out there of any team not just cricket um yeah look it, it's hard to to pinpoint one um you know i i'm a believer that you're you're always consuming things so the the, the better the environment you can i mean a product of the environment perhaps is the the common phrase um and the, the healthier that is obviously the more of that you'll consume and you know, growing up, I was fortunate to captain a number of age group teams. Um, I'm not really sure why. I think when you're really young, um, the the players vote, and then that kind of is the the way it is. And um, and then it, it seems to continue to progress um, a, a little bit. You know, the the leadership at, at a younger level is is quite different. Um, you know, yeah. I, I'd like to to you know a slightly older um or, or professional environment and I, I remember the day that um i was asked to to captain the new zealand team and i always there was you know a part of that process that appeared um like natural progression and i, I sort of that didn't sit really comfortably with me i, I felt like um it should just be the best person for the job and, and what is that job um so yeah. the aspiration for the role um in my opinion shouldn't come all that far into um who that person is because i it's you know leading people or, or being in a in a leadership role is sort of it's not about you and and often what what you want it's it's the direction of the group and and where it is that that we need to go and, and the behaviours that we want to be um, performing day in, day out. And and then it's how are we tracking and it's it's um, the yeah. engagement between players and perhaps management. And then um, at, at this level, it's 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 also media who are always good fun. Um, and it's it's a number of other uh, areas that you, you seem to find yourself involved in. So it's I've always found aspiration for leadership kind of a, an interesting term um yeah yeah because it's um very much about the the guys or girls that that you 
have and you're working with and, and you're wanting to see, um, I suppose, move in, in the right direction and, and in the right way. And um, when I say right, I mean that, you know, we're following along the, the philosophy that's, you know, really important to, to the group that you have. And then I guess that might be a little bit further down the track than perhaps school kids and these sorts of yeah. things. But without a doubt, um, you know, in all schools, there are always, um, you know, uh, I guess different qualities that are really important um, within it that they're always emphasizing. And, and then often you can work backwards from that, I think. And, and what does that look like for us, you know? And, yeah. and, and we, we're, to a degree, it's, it's often what we, we currently do, you know, whether it's making sure your small things, perhaps um, leaving your, your dressing room tidy um, yeah. when you leave. Um, the, these little things that seem quite normal, but, but perhaps don't happen as much as they should, at, certainly at our level. So, you know, yeah. I guess as a group, I think that's that's really important. Yeah, cool. Yeah, those little things added together end up to usually being a sizable uh, piece, uh, as it were. So very important, those small things. Yeah. Um, we might we might just at this moment check in with Belinda. Uh, uh, Belinda, are you there? Um, have we got got a got a little question around any of the stuff that we've talked about so far? Uh, yes, Dave. I have a question from Gus. A question that I've asked others. I believe. Oh, hang on. I believe in sport. There is a need for technical, technical, and expression. How do you and your organisation teams work to make these things intrinsic and in natural? Oh, sorry. You so, just broke up there a bit, Belinda, I think. Yeah. I'll go again. How, okay. I believe in sport there is a need for technical, technical and expression. So how do you and your organisation or teams work to make these things intrinsic and then actions autonomous? Um, yeah, look, uh, the, the technical part, um, yeah, it's quite interesting because I think you'd see... Um, across any individual anywhere um, and whether it's at the top of their field that they're all very very different um, so having a very open mind with with what technique is uh, I think is important but without a doubt technique is important but just it can be very different from one person to the next um, and so within cricket it's quite unique because there's so many variables and, and uncontrollables that that people always try and work it out um, in slightly different ways. So that's why I'm quite big on creating environments for growth and, and yeah. where players within that head, um, you know, is quite a natural thing, um, which is kind of, I think, another point that you touched on. How do you make it natural? Well, I think you don't try and manufacture it too much. Um, you address the individual uh, in, in the way that, that they would like to head, and it, it's a support role and sometimes... You know, support staff's quite widely used, but sometimes it can be forgotten. Whereas we're supporting this this individual, um, whoever it is, and and what it is that they want to do, and expressing themselves is is often the, the yeah. naturalness that comes out. So whether it's a it's a batsman um, and they want to play a certain way um, because that's natural to them, then often you encourage that um, and, and channel it to to a degree. Um, and technique sort of fits around that um, in its own way. So that's my view on it. Um, tactical, you know, that's often, I believe, role, quite role-based. So the tactics perhaps for, for someone batting in a certain, um, you know, number, maybe opening batter, you know, their tactics will have to be quite different um, and, and also married up to, to how they like to play their cricket. Um, and so... Whether someone's batting in the, the lower order, um, their tactics will also have to be um, quite different to that as well. Um, and that's, you know, the, the same with, with bowling. Um, and then all of that considered, um, I think it's, it's very important that because you're a part of a team, that that is then connected to what it is we want to do as a group because ultimately that's the most important thing is are we adding to what it is that we're trying to do um, in the direction that we're wanting to go um, and to me that's that's a really important part for, uh, for a team 
um, and a team improving is that you've got a, a bunch of people that are looking to do that because if you've got guys or girls that are detracting from this, then all of a sudden there are, there are a number of fractures and the technique and the tactics become less relevant um, or, yeah. or not so important because it's not channeled in, in, uh, in a way that's adding to, to what it is you're trying to do collectively. Cool. Yeah, well, it's a great answer. Okay. Great answer to one of the curliest questions we've had so far. <laughs> I have one more question, Dave. AKB. Okay, uh, this is from Gray Craig Gordon. I'm really interested in what happens in your mind from the time the ball is released from the bowler's arm. Are you focusing on the line or the length primarily and what's going on mentally? I think that the best answer would be to not ask that question. Um, because it's a, it's a funny thing because it's not a conscious uh, process because if it is, it's too slow. Um, so it's, it's through, once again, I think, being in an environment where it's challenged and it's practiced um, and you do it and you, you do it and you do it and you fail and you have a, you have a good day and you have a, a good moment and you fail and, and you go through all these experiences to help um, that process improve. Um, and I think patience um, and and having I guess an open mind and acceptance um, are, are things that are really important to that process to make steps forward um, and to learn from it because often um, we'll think about one thing and we'll be very judgmental of ourselves and 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 that'll be the end of it and it's like going into a, a practice session and you walk away and and say whether it was a good one or a bad one well you know, in a lot of ways, that's quite irrelevant because if it was a good one and you just judged it on the way you hit the ball, then actually how important is that going into tomorrow when all conditions might be different? And whether it's yeah. a bad one, um, is that just judged on, once again, just the pure outcome of, of what it was you, you were marking that score and you go into tomorrow and conditions are all different again. So actually realising that some of these small things in our initial judgments aren't all that important, but what we can perhaps learn from them, problem solve. You know, if you have a number of bad ones and they keep coming, then perhaps it's nice to know that that, that for sure is not working. So we might try something else um, rather than beating yourself up. Um, yeah. I think I got a little bit wide on that question, but I know, uh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's very much, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a conscious thought. Um, you know, I suppose yeah. when bowling at, at 150 and um, the mind's trying to process it too quickly, then that can be a little bit too difficult. So, yeah. yeah. I think that it, there's a lot of research that, that at, at the level, obviously, that you guys are performing at, that, that all of those have to be autonomous and already there. Uh, or you're, you're effectively on autopilot as, as, as that's coming down. So, yeah. Um, and, but, and having uh, said that, I think that the... Um, the ability to limit distraction in that period would yeah, be yeah. Um, would probably be the most important part to that. Um, and distraction um, might be asking yourself that question in that moment, you know, which is <laughs> appear to be quite confusing. But um, you know, being able to deal with the things that come in and what is it that I need to be looking for at this time? Against all of a sudden, there's it's a lot of busyness going on when, in fact, um, when you let when you're able to let go. Um, commit to perhaps a, a game plan that you know is important to to benefiting you then then you can limit some of that distraction yeah so so which that kind of again leads us nicely kind of onto the next question which is around kind of obviously you, you have the captain's role uh, uh, at the black caps there and uh, that's a busy role uh, that obviously comes with some challenges and distractions when you're out there on the on the field as well um, what, what are some of those challenges and, and kind of what's your perspective on, on being the captain of an international cricket team? Yeah, um, you know, the, the challenges, I suppose, are always being fully aware of the, the task as captain. And, you know, there's, there's a number of parts to it, but off the field is kind of um, often big picture stuff. Um, yeah. And then, and also, you, you're often sharing reminders of what's important to to the group. And you know that leadership role isn't you're not you're certainly not the only leader. There's a number of leaders within the group. You know, I'm a, a big believer of um, shared 
leadership, I, I suppose, in terms of a structure, because you know if people don't have a a say, um, feel like they belong, you know, within the group, then then how are you f- sort of all fully meant to to commit to that cause that's that's important um, to you all? So, you know, there's there's kind of that part um, and picture to it. You also got the yeah. the support staff that are that are big and um, helping with that, and and then on the field, there's um, you know a little bit more about the cricket um, yeah. directly and 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 tactics and perhaps how you want to skin the cat. So you know it is a a task that's um, I, I suppose separate to some of your core skills, which you know yeah. would be uh, the batting and the odd bowl uh, every now and again, but um so sorry kane I, I don't want to interrupt your chain of thought i'll just uh ask rajit uh if you could turn your camera off please rajit that would be great thank you lovely sorry kane where you go yeah no i mean yes so it, it, it was something different um you know the day before captaincy to to getting the captaincy in fact it was quite different even prior to some uh experiences that I had when when Brendan who uh, was obviously captain before um, was there where you were just purely uh, caretaking and, and doing the on-field stuff um, versus obviously being a lot more involved um, in, a, in a number of different ways but you know a lot of the enjoyable parts to to the job are kind of seeing the the, the growth of the group um, and and also in, encouraging you know, a number of guys to to step into some some leadership roles to absolutely help enforce what it is that's important to us as a group, um, whether you're winning, losing, or tying. And uh, the word tie might segue into another question. I'm guessing. <laughs> um, the, or no, no, it's probably um, just uh, uh, you kind of talked about seeing the the growth of the rest of your team there. Is that something that you feel uh, kind of inspires you or helps your own performance, as it were, where if you're seeing growth in, in other players uh, in and around you, does, does that help you in your performance, do you feel? Um, yeah, I, you, once again, it's, a, it's kind of a, a separate role and within that you have a, a job to do, um, you know, which is your, your role in the side as a, as a player. Um, and then I guess to the side or on top of, that um you know is is enforced well when i say enforcing i i that that sounds strong but um encouraging uh a lot of those other those other parts and once again it's along with um a number of others within the group but when you do see guys committing to to what you're doing as a group which you know, I guess unfortunate to say is, has been more often than not, um, which yeah. you know, these sorts of things have been built up over a, a long period of time. And, I, and I'm not saying that on the base of results. I'm, I'm saying that on, on what you see in some of the decisions that, that players make in certain situations and, um, you know, whether you, you might be at home and, and, and see something happen and, and have your own judgment, you know, within a, a side, you know, whether that's in line with what it is that you're trying to do as a group and and you're absolutely expected to to do the same yeah cool cool you, you've uh, um you know in as a as a captain and in all the teams that you've played and you'd have played under kind of many coaches in your career i'm sure there's a few coaches out there listening in tonight um what would you consider to be some of the kind of the the key qualities in in, in coaches that you've worked with which are which are probably get more outside of the technical and tactical aspects but or in environment and some of the softer skills of coaching, what, what, what would you consider to be some of those yeah, qualities? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think absolutely at a, at a younger age, the, the softer skills are, are really, you know, important. Um, if I think back to a lot of my times, and you know, I bring up that environment part where, where people feel like they can be encouraged to, to improve what it is that, that they want to bring to things. And, um, and you know sometimes within that certainly at a, a very young level where you're, you're trying to ingrain some fundamentals and and some patience might be required um, more often um <laughs> you know and that that is that is important but also i think creating environments where kids are problem solving um yeah sometimes we get 
caught up in trying to sell a perhaps a technique or an idea when um when the the kid maybe can't see the reason and and they sort of it's quite hard to fully adopt when when that's not all that clear um whereas you know a simple task of perhaps rather than manufacturing a a cover drive i suppose you know yeah. maybe encouraging a kid to hit 10 balls in 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 this area um and see what it is that you you might find out or discover um yeah and you know i still think that's you know benefit to uh, to older players as well and and working with with the the body and the skills that that are yours and that you have um to then develop and and i do think that does require a, a lot of patience um yeah to, to know that there'll be some failure and to not take that personally as a coach because you know we're all yes. invested, we're all invested in this thing and um and actually the the continued encouragement of of the the players and the team and and what's really important you know you've been reminding ourselves of what what's important you know and whether at a certain level it's it is that enjoyment so there are going to be more games or at another level it's it's an enjoyment in a different way and it's really trying to increase the 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 level of performance or it's the yeah. staying you know aware of, of some of those things I, I think it's really important yeah cool you meant you mentioned the word failing in there as well and uh we have a little saying around here that uh, uh, failing is learning thinly disguised. And uh, um, I think that's one of the key things out there in the coaching sector at the moment that, uh, you know, we should be uh, embracing failure as a, as a means for, for young people to learn um, uh, and, and then understand why you might need to do it a different way or yeah, think about yeah. another, another route to take. So I, I think accepting um, failure is incredibly important like in anything um but playing cricket you, you're going to experience it a lot especially if you're a batsman um and, you know i know that if i'm too frustrated about sort of uh something that i i failed at then my ability to to see it and learn from it um i, I think's definitely sort of taken away from you obviously you're, you're in a your mind's got ahead of itself and, and you've yeah. chased something that you, you haven't quite been able to grasp and you've failed and you're frustrated and you um and i do think that can mask sometimes the the opportunity to learn from it rather than yeah. um if you can ex accept that um that it, it's gonna it happens to to everyone um certainly every batsman whether you're the best in the world or or not um and that can be decided on any given day. So, yeah. um, you know, if you can learn to accept it, see it for what it is and use it to improve, then like you said, it's a, it's an important thing. Yeah. Cool. And in that coaching, uh, your coaching experience, as it were, um, is there, is it, can you remember a time when a coach has had a really significant impact on you or, or on the performance of a team? something that they've done, something that's occurred where you thought, yeah, that really, really made a difference? Yeah, look, I, I think if, um, you know, I think back to, oh, I might have to take my mind back, geez, even some of my younger rugby days. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I do, uh, one of the most recent shifts um, that uh, is probably more clear would be, um, when certainly Brendan and um, Mike Hesson took over in a, in a coaching role and did uh, shake things up a little bit and um, and really sort of united the team and, and got the team on on track and wanting to move in the same direction and and a lot of that was um, you know based on the behaviours that we wanted to to perform we had so many uh, you know wins and losses and and losses and uh and you mm -hmm. got to a point that you went what's what's the most important part to to what it is that we want to do and we're fortunate to have people that that perhaps support us and um you know and and judge us and and that's great and they care um and what it is what is it that that whether we win or lose we can still take out um in any game um, and not just judge ourselves purely on the end result, which
can just change and 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 be so inconsistent um, and fickle. Um, yes. Yeah. So we thought the only way to perhaps encourage that was to be to be um, uh, what's the word? Just uh, to be more consistent um, in in our behaviour. Um, yeah. You know, and then, and if that had a flow on effect to what it is that we were doing on the field, that was cool. But we kind of kept coming back to those important traits. And, you know, the word selfless is um, thrown around a lot, but that was something that was really important to, and still is very much um, a big part of, of our environment and, and encouraged to, to the point where, you know, there is a sort of an induction process for, for guys coming into the team to, yeah. to try and get a, a picture of what that looks like because it, it will be different to perhaps their previous environment. Yeah, so so that concept of selflessness in the, in the team environment, what uh, what might you see? What what does it look like? Well, what's an example of, of what you might see of selflessness in, in action? Because ultimately yeah. you can have um, thoughts, beliefs, but obviously the action part is always the uh, the critical part. What, does yeah. that, what do you see? And, uh, we, I think we, when you see it um, is when you've got guys committing to to what you're trying to do as a team, right? And you can see it. You can see it off the field. You can you can see it um, very much on the field. And and it's tough because there's there can be an interpretation of um, perhaps a certain dismissal could be argued one way or the other. But if that dismissal is and and that effort um, aligns with what is most important for this team at this point in time to give us the best chance of, of ending up where we want to end up, then, yeah. you know, I would certainly believe that to be a, a selfless behaviour. And and yeah. I just think, um, you know, in a, in a team environment, and it's quite unique in cricket because there's a lot of individual components, but, yeah. you know, in a, in a team environment, I think I'm a believer that a, a selfless team is a, a dangerous team. Um, you yeah. know, when you have people committing to a when I say dangerous I mean I mean <laughs> every opportunity to, uh, to obviously yeah to, to, to beat um, or get across the line against the opponents whether on that given day there's a there's a win or a loss you know the the focus changes straight away to, to the next task and the next opportunity and if you are consistent um, in that approach and creating reminders for yourself because that's also a, a challenge too and you can you can have a number of good days and yeah. get caught up in wanting a few more good days rather than keep bringing yourself back to what's really important. So, you know, the the selfless part to to what you do and it can be practiced, like I say, off off the park with um, you know team um, expectations. Um, yeah. And you'd like to think that on the park, then when guys are under pressure, their their decision making will be sort of aligned to that. And and yeah. like I say, it can it can make you it can make you dangerous, but it's a, it's very much a, an ongoing um, challenge in terms of it's it's progressive. It, it's sort of um, you know, and uh, like I say, reminders are required, and it's it's never mastered by any means. And, and I think <laughs> just being a human being and hanging out with a, a bunch of others that you know you you're always kept honest in, in so many ways. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're continuing to try and improve and, and move the group forward. Um, we all are a part of that. And yeah, yeah. and I guess the word selfless is, is an important part. Cool. Cool. That's a great insight into uh, a little bit of uh, uh, the, the world that, that you work in every day. Um, we might just check in again with Belinda for, for a question. B, are you, uh, have you got anything in the uh, chat there? Yep. Got quite a few actually, Dave. Uh, uh, one... Just, one, just one or two. <laughs> okay, one from Josh. He says, I think I can speak on behalf of the country when I say we all admire the true humility you display to the world, Kane. What are some of the key ways you keep yourself grounded or being in the position that you are? Uh, great question. Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't consider myself humble. Um, I, I'm a believer that you try and sort of see it for what it is um and and be accurate in in your views and i don't know that's i don't know what the word is but it's it's you know being humble is is kiwis and um you know certainly within our group is is an 
an important trait. You know, it's something that as a teammate um, is, is respected um, within our group. And, and so, you know, it's having, having certainly more care for the person uh, that's beside you than all your focus maybe on your, yourself, you know, maybe sort of an example of humility, but it's just an important part of our, our group. Um, yeah, it's, it's a funny term because I don't know, it's the idea of that is, it's not something you think about or you, you try and do, you just, um, yeah, know, but kind to yeah. say, thank you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a, a lot of it's part of who you are, kind of how you've been brought up and environment you've been in. So, I think, yeah, um, and, and, yeah, I don't know. And, and you always try, I mean, fortunate to do what, what um, we do and it's play the sport that we love and it, at the highest level. And, and there are a lot of things, you know, around it that can, can maybe try and take your, your feet off the ground and, um, you know, yeah. some, some attractions and, and whatever it is that, that surround the game that you're, you're fortunate to, to be involved in, but it's but very important not to, um, to let it sort of drag you away from, from what's important. You know, I'm a, yeah. I'm a believer in that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, one more question, B. Got another one there. Uh, yes, this one's from Anna Peterson. She says, what are your thoughts on leadership groups and how do you ensure young or new players to the group feel valued and have a voice? Cool. Yeah. Um, look, it's, I don't think there's a rule for leadership. I, I think it's, to me, it's about the, the group that you have, but I do think every individual should be very much valued. Um, you, if it's a cricket team, you you're just one player within it, um, and and therefore, um, for me, um, as a group, you're wanting to create an environment where people basically want to contribute to the to the bigger picture. And and then, if you're working backwards, what's the best way to do it and make that player feel really valued? It's to it's to ask them perhaps questions and and give them a voice because, you know, one, I think I mentioned it recently or just before that. It's hard to fully buy into to that big picture if you don't perhaps have some small say in, in what it is. So yeah. um, that's whether that so that probably doesn't connect to maybe a, a younger group, but I mean some of those those discussions can still be had at, at whatever level. And um, yeah, but that's something that's really important, I think, to as you as you get a, a little bit older and and those sorts of things and beards or whatever else <laughs> cool thank you uh, b have you we got time for one more one more short one um okay um hang on as a youngster oh hang on as a youngster intermediate how many games are you playing a week or a month um well only in the summer I, I don't know. I suppose it was a Saturday, and then maybe some um, rep cricket on on the Sunday. That was oh, and then we also had um, the Milo Cup, uh, which was ah, some of the, those some are the of days, the, the glory <laughs> days. Yeah, um, I don't. Does it exist anymore? I'm not sure. No, I think Scott would be better better to answer that one. Oh, okay. Anyway, I, <laughs> anyway, there was a, an inter school tournament, um, and so it was knockout actually, and um, and so we managed to, there was an added incentive to, to get the odd sort of day off school. So our team managed to fight our way through for uh, a, a number of weeks, which was um, really exciting. And um, so we had a few more days playing cricket there. But, but usually it was, yeah, your Saturday uh, and, and Sunday, I think. Yeah, cool. Cheers, Kane. We'll just, uh, we'll Hang just on, take... Dave. One oh. more. I like, I like oh. this one, so I've got to ask oh, you. Okay. Do I like if it? Had, if you had to swap <laughs> cricket as your chosen sport to another, what would that be? Uh, um, well, at school, I loved my basketball, but that was probably never going to happen. You can't tell from there, but <laughs> I'm six foot eight. So, um, <laughs> yeah, there, there wasn't much chance, perhaps. Uh, but more recently, I'm really enjoying my... Uh, surfing which i'm also i'm not very good at but um 
that would be good fun, I think. Surfing or darts, maybe. Cool. Yeah. Multi multifaceted. Yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, we might just pop over and give you a rest for a short moment there, Kane. Um, Scott, uh, who uh, is the development officer for Bay of Plenty Cricket. Scott, do you want to just give everybody in the community a, a, just a brief update of, of what's happening in the in the cricket world? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, hey, everybody. Good to see a lot of familiar, familiar names. Um, there's a lot of the cricket community online, which is great. Um, thanks for coming along. Um, look, there's not a huge amount to, to update everybody on. Obviously, we just coming off our cricket season, but we've been doing a lot of work and just trying to uh, get some planning underway. So we're working on uh, um, something exciting, which we're, is the Women's World Cup is happening in New Zealand uh, next summer. And we're hosting a few games at the Bay Oval. So we've been working um, with them around a few activation events that we'll be running. Um, it sounds like it's all going ahead at this stage. We haven't heard anything different. So that'll be something cool uh, for the community over the summer. Um, a few people might be wondering whether our, our season's going to be affected at all um, due to COVID. And it looks like we've been working with Sport Bay of Plenty, um, who've taken the lead on organising our season start dates um, with the winter codes. And it looks like it'll be pretty much business as usual uh, for cricket. Uh, especially junior cricket, so that's good news for for all the kids who are keen to get back into it uh, come the summertime. Um, we got some good news this week from ANZ as well, who are big supporters of cricket, and they've got a um, million dollar fund available for our clubs and schools. So uh, if you want to get in touch with your clubs um, to to put some applications in, there's some funding available to to help sort of kickstart. Uh, cricket and netball uh, this year. Um, and other than that, there's not not a huge amount else to update. Uh, there's a few guidelines if you are keen to get back into cricket and do some training um, with some of your coaches. Just be um, aware that there are some level two COVID guidelines to follow, which we sent out to all the coaches, um, just to keep everybody uh, keep everybody safe at the moment. But uh, other than that, uh, not too much to report on, Dave. Cool. Thanks very much, Scott. It's uh, good to get an update as to what's going on uh, in the cricket world at the moment in the region. Um, we'll head back to Kane. We're, we're, we're getting deep into the innings now. Uh, uh, just three or four questions to go, Kane. Um, just uh, uh, and probably uh, uh, given that uh, you're in a situation now where, which is kind of unprecedented, you're obviously getting a chance to spend some probably quality time. Uh, with your family, but your your international cricket tour uh, normally is the schedule is is pretty incredible, really. Uh, even when I compare it to almost any other sport, the amount of time that you guys spend uh, away from home. Um, so, how do you and your team kind of maintain your own kind of personal balance for yourself and stay connected to friends and family, given that that is such a an arduous schedule? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, like you say, the, the calendar, uh, every year you get told that um, that it's a big year uh, and then they seem to, I don't know how much bigger it can get than sort of the previous, but they, the content keeps growing, which, you know, it's great to see that the sport continue to grow. Um, but therein lies a, a few challenges with, with volume and, um, yeah. you know, good, good challenges, I suppose. And I think... For guys, the, the mindset is a really important part to it. Um, when you do have a, a day off, um, you do try and get away and, and provide a, a little bit of balance. Uh, and and also nowadays, because of the, the volume and the schedule, um, you know, if you're playing all three formats, then then at times there will be opportunities for, for players to, to try and have those little breaks um, yeah. to help mentally and, and physically because... Um, you know, it's, it's sort of not a fully sustainable thing um, mm. if you are doing uh, all, all the formats. But at the same time, you know, chopping between formats does provide uh, a little bit of freshness as well. And you do enjoy yeah. um, looking forward to, to something, you know, different. And, and um, in terms of staying connected with your, your family, it's, you know, it's much like this, I suppose, where you, you do the... The Skype sessions and 
um, and whatnot. But you know, in a lot of ways, because you you can kind of get used to that um, way of life, it is an element of you know becoming normal for for a period of time. And that's why you know this this time has been obviously unique for everybody. But um, you know, for us and and being fortunate to have finished our season, so it hasn't had a huge impact at this point in time on yeah, yeah. on our sport has been sort of also an opportunity for, for all the guys to um you know in our sort of set up to to sort of spend a bit more time at home and, and have a, a real break where it's you know when you when you don't have uh, breaks one or two days feels like a long time but yeah. in fact isn't so it's actually having in months um where it's something to get used to and, and not have your mind I suppose tracking what what sort of might be there in the future and, and looking ahead to things so you can actually just sort of decompress a bit and um and do a few other bits and pieces yeah, and yeah so it's, there's been parts to it that I think have been healthy for guys yeah you, you alluded to to the fun part right at the start of this convo you know right at the beginning of the conversations we've been having uh and uh, I think given that schedule I think you know you see more and more professional sport having little breaks and sabbaticals because to manage and, and maintain the fun element and the freshness is, is uh, critical to the performance. So you, you can't be brilliant every day all of the time, can you? No, oh, yeah. easy. Agreed. Cool. Um, I can't think during, during obviously this period of isolation and lockdown, kind of what ways from a team perspective, what ways have you kind of adapted in order to kind of stay connected and in shape and kind of ticking over you know is it backyard cricket with the dog uh what is it that you've been doing yeah that, that's all that's all the cricket i've done actually um it's but it's funny i've been asked that question a few times and and um to be honest haven't had much contact at all which um has probably more been an intention than than anything because we spent a, a huge amount of time together um and so when you do have uh, i guess this period of time it's been it's been nice for guys just to to really sort of i mean the the, the bubble has been used a lot but i guess mm. in some ways we have a, a cricket bubble for a period of time to really just get away from from it for a little bit and and um and i, and I think guys have been enjoyed it to a certain extent just to uh but it is it's been unusual from that perspective and um and more recently as we come to level two without a doubt um you know, scott mentioned there's there's a lot more chat around um potential uh cricketing um events yes. and, and when we start to know more um you know then then there'll be a lot more physical cricket um components involved but um or, but also coming out of lockdown there's there's been a lot more contact with guys i mean we, we had our awards evening online which oh okay you know that was different yeah that was different um you know, a couple of bits and pieces but for the most part i think guys have really enjoyed um you know getting getting sort of into their their homes and and spending some time there and doing a few dishes and and whatnot <laughs> yeah back, back to reality yeah 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 for sure so so uh given the bubbles situation i mean if uh if australia can get themselves in in gear, do we do we do we envision a fifteen test series versus Australia <laughs> or something coming yeah, up? Or? Yeah, I don't know. Um, there's definitely talk of, I mean, not that as such, but um, no. you know, if our if our, uh, if our countries can be safe, and I mean, look at in a time like this when you you're so long without um, the effort to create content um, in all areas. Um, Sports, you know, are, are big on that. Then I'm sure that there'll be uh, some cricket. Um, I know there's a, a number of chats, but at this point in time, it's it's all sort of just ideas. But um, yeah, yes, as time passes, then yeah, I'm sure there'll be yeah a flood of cricket to come um, when the when the gates open. Cool, cool. Um, probably just a couple of questions to go uh, as time presses on. Um, um, because obviously uh, it's been a you're 29 years old now, so you you uh, you're, you're not one of the uh, the the oldies as it were, but you, but uh, you're now a seasoned uh, uh, professional. 
if you could go back in time and tell and tell your teenage self one thing uh, that you've learned to date, kind of to, to better function within your team, what would that be? Um, you know, I, I mean, I was, um, I, I suppose, yeah, I mean, I was still am, I guess, very competitive and, and sort of tenacious and <laughs> in, in my drive to, to improve. And, um, you know, I think there's some healthy parts to, to that, but I also think having patience uh, is is really important as well, you know, because we, we touched on failure and 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 how it's it's never far away. Um, and I think patience can help with with the with the learning process. But I, but when you're younger, um, yeah, it's kind of a hard thing to comprehend. <laughs> you're, you're just you're going for it, and, you're, and it's you're just loving what what you're doing and, and enjoying the the environment you're in. But you know, I think I think being being patient, um, yeah, was something that that we can all probably do a little bit bit better from time to time. Yeah, cool. Good advice. Good advice. Um, and uh, I probably uh, have to go go to this next question because um, I'm sure it's what uh, everyone remembers uh, very keenly in their memories. Obviously, the World Cup was uh, go down in history probably as the closest ever. I can't see that being any closer than that. Um, for you and the team, I mean, for you specifically, but uh, what were you thinking and feeling in those closing moments of that World Cup match, that World Cup final, uh, kind of like just, just before you got to the point where you were tied up during the Super Over and kind of, you know, that that period, that those moments where you got to the death there and, and kind of how do you reflect on that now? Yeah, um, yeah like as we were... The game was progressing. Um, when you're when you're involved in it, you're very much sort of focused on the the task. What do we need to do next? Um, and so that was kind of where my mind was. And then as the game yeah. was sort of drawing to an end, <laughs> and there were you know a number of events that happened that were just oh. bizarre and and outside of your control, and you know a deflection, and then the they get the thing wrong and I don't know but um you know all the, these parts to it that that happened you know the, the game wasn't over at that point and so it was you know it was remarkable I mean I've never been involved in a game that you know when you have so many significant parts to it that happen right at the end and have such a strong bearing on the result um yeah. we all know that in a game of cricket there's there's parts to it that you can't control, but when they're yeah. large and they happen at the end, it's it's quite hard to uh, to do something to I guess rectify it and come back from and and then it yeah. you know it can be um you know, it can be a large part of the the result and it, and it was and um you know it was a great game of cricket to be a part of but the thought at that point was you know what do we need to do and then it became super over and then it was kind of like so what are the rules here what if we tie this and sort of only part way through the um the super over was i aware that it was a count back on thinking, surely surely not but um and then I, well, I remember asking the questions what if this is a tie it's most boundaries and who's a, who's at the most boundaries they have yeah. oh, shit um right and uh yeah and then it, and then it happened and um you know we were sort of standing there and you know it was it, Tough to accept because you know you've never played in a you've played thousands of games of cricket and and there's never been a game decided um, in that fashion. Yeah. And so it's very difficult to get your head around. However, um, you know you do you, you sign up to to play by the rules that someone makes and and that's you know that that is life and you you never. Um, in your right mind would imagine that, you know, whether we know those rules entirely or not, you never in your right mind would imagine that an event like that no. could, could go to to the fine print that that was in a, a, a rule book. And, and it did, you know. And, and so, um, yeah, decompressing from it, and but also walking away from it and, and knowing that um, we kind of put our best foot forward. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the perfect game, but it, it didn't have to be to, to win it. 
Um, yeah. Because yeah, the the parts of the, that surround you know what a final is, and but you knew that if you could commit to the cricket that you wanted to play, and, and we, we knew this that you'd give yourselves every chance of um, of winning, and and the idea is you want to be able to put teams under under pressure, um, particularly in in environments that are already already consumed in in pressure. So sometimes a you know a little press in the right direction can can have a big impact, and we knew that. The wickets in the tournament, um, they they were sporting and they, they they always you know offered opportunities and so you now as a batting group it was what do we need to do and then as a bowling group it was what do we need to do and and I think it, walking away from that that game we we could be proud of um, of those efforts and and the cricket that we we did want to play and like I say it, it wasn't perfect and very rarely uh, you know is it sort of yeah. perfect but it um, but we were able to walk away and, and sort of um, be okay with it in that respect. But then getting your head around, I, I suppose, um, rulings and ideas that, that come from, from outside and, and to understand it, you know, are difficult but need to be accepted. And, you know, we only ever go into games and and try and carry that attitude of um, of the sort of cricket that we want to play, the, the opportunities to, to improve. Um, and yeah. and try and yeah, like I say, try and commit to that. Um, yeah. The result um, can produce it itself sometimes, but you know, if you're you're putting your care into those processes, I suppose, then then that will give you you every chance. And yeah, um, the result in this instance was was really bizarre. And then you add the the scale of of the match and then all these other parts to it. it it's yeah, you know, it can make it all a little bit emo- you know more emotional, but but the cricket that was there was was something that you know we were we were were happy and yeah. and proud of. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, probably speak for for everybody here that we I think everybody felt that uh, you got you and the team made it made uh, New Zealand proud in your efforts and uh, and the way you dealt with all of that in the moment as well. So that uh, would have been an easy task. So I think. Yeah, yeah. So it was a huge effort, and as you say, sort of ended slightly bizarrely. But uh, um, you know, well, they'll they'll maybe change a couple of those rules for the future. Let's hope. So. Yeah, they already have it. <laughs> oh, it's done already, is it? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, we'll just uh, just check in for Belinda once more. Have you got another question there before we finish up, Lee? Uh no, Dave. They're not. Questions, but they're um, just some some really cool things. Uh, and so um, we've got two here. Uh, the first one is it's been cool. That's uh, from Campbell Price. It's been cool seeing you around the mount lots of late, grabbing coffee and walking the dog. Mum and Dad see you heaps while they are walking. And then Carl has also said. You're a great New Zealander, Kane. Hope that one day you're able to sneak in a club game here in the Bay. Your <laughs> would love to host you. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be on the other side, would he? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks, Thank thanks, B. That's uh, that's great. Um, I think um, that we'll we'll uh, we'll just go, uh, wind up a little bit now, Kane. So uh, I think just before we head out, I probably would just like to. <laughs> Thank everybody that's been online this evening uh, here to gain some insights for, from Kane. Um, as coaches, players, managers, all, all of you folks out there, I suspect that uh, um, your role in the community at the moment will become even more important as we try and kind of get back to sport post post COVID nineteen. Um, we've got to be there's going to be a bit of rebuilding, resetting uh, going on. Um, Kane, thanks very much for your time uh, uh, and uh, your insights tonight around the world that you live in normally um, and obviously your service, service to cricket in New Zealand. Um, we wish you and the team uh, all good luck in the future endeavours, you know, in that in that 15 test series against Australia. It will be coming. Uh, and, you know, whatever that looks like in the short and the long term, I think, uh, you know, uh, you, you do cricket proud and the Bay proud. So. Thanks very much for giving up your time tonight to talk to the folks out there. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, cheers. Sorry, it's unusual not um, not speaking and sort of not being able to see your audience. Uh, I and I hope there's 
something that was relevant um, there, but it's been enjoyable. And um, thanks again for the opportunity. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Kane. And thanks very much to uh, everyone behind the scene for keeping us on track this evening. Um, our next audience with webinar will be later in the year as kind of sport gets back to itself and details will be sent out through the coaching passport on our website. So uh, again, thanks very much for all you do in the community and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.